What I would like to do now is uh, take this forum uh, today, which is usually not a forum that we speak at scientific meetings, and tell you a little bit about what we learned with this whole CCSVI story, not scientifically, but on the other end of the chance bias and confounding. We, when two years ago, almost two and a half years ago, Professor Zamboni uh, get in contact with us and presented his grand rounds. We clearly have been skeptic and we still are. And uh, we have been in the same time very excited to uh, begin to investigate something that was logical to us, which had a good uh, biological uh, plausibility hypothesis. And uh, clearly we put a lot of time, a lot of uh, effort, uh, from all uh, different uh, angles into this research. And, uh, but, but one important thing when you, when you are uh, uh, really carrying over such a huge burden as we do at this moment, because what we say, I think, is really listened by hundreds of thousands of people. Some may like it, some may not, some may only listen probably the most of MS community is listening at this time and waiting what will happen. And in that case, we really took extraordinary measures uh, in this climate of uh, extraordinary interest and also extraordinary controversy. And to really disclose where all the funds came from according to the current guidelines to be very transparent in our uh, fundings uh, you you all uh, received in your package that we received approximately six hundred thousand dollars until now from various donations and thank to all of you around the world who contributed to to the studies we did uh, uh, we are obliged to follow what is the right pathway and that means write papers submit the papers get the papers peer-reviewed and published and we need to sign legal agreements which i will tell you in a moment that are important when you are publishing the papers we also took an extraordinary measure from when I'm in Buffalo nine, nine years, this has never been done on either one of my study or Dr. Weinstock Gutmann's study, and that's we ask for independent audit of the statisticians of our study, and uh, uh, more than 100 pages have been produced in documentation, and I can tell you that uh, <laughs> definitely everything what we publish is exactly uh, as it is. Uh, that's a very important statement to make, and, and I want that uh, people all over the world uh, uh, hear about that. And uh, clearly there is always uh, doubt, and we responsibly acknowledge doubt, uh, uh, because uh, uh, real answers are necessarily obscured by many confounding factors. So, the role of research, clinical medicine, and journalism play important role. If not, there would be, we would not be staying here if there was no such a huge interest for the CCSVI. And however, we must restrict our activities to comply with ethical, legal, medical, and practical constraints. We cannot recommend treatment at this time because we are pursuing placebo control studies and as Professor Siddiqui uh, 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 already said, there are clearly on the internet uh, reports from the patients who are now, you know, dancing and couldn't walk before, but we want all these ladies who like dancing to dance in the future all around the world. And not just that lady or that lady or that lady. And in order to prove that, we need to show, as Dr. Siddiqui is saying, that from step one to step then, some people in Cleveland, San Francisco, or LA can do the same thing. We cannot engage in internet debate because somebody can write a comment and uh, expect an answer from Dr. Zivadino or Dr. Weinstock the next day. I don't think that's possible. Uh, 
Uh, also because by publishing papers in these journals, we are obliged to uh, uh, legally to make all the correspondence through the journal itself. However, this meeting here today and hopefully the future meetings we will participate to are the great forum opportunity to uh, uh, discuss from time to time our findings and I will start in a second Q&A questions with more hot topic questions from the internet in relation to our neurology study published a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago. And we must adhere to our mission, which is the purpose uh, is research and uh, pursue the truth. The value of the truth is very important for the patients because we are advancing the knowledge and that's the surest path to the cure. To the funders, because we are moving understanding and debate forward. And to researchers, because we are working collaboratively to many people around the world on this topic. And to the clinicians themselves, because we are providing honest and reliable guidance and hopefully opening new doors for more different paths. So, Bianca, if you want to come here and just uh, continue for a couple of slides where we want to go uh, uh, ahead. Okay, so uh, clearly we are, we are looking also, uh, CCSVI may interfere with other diseases, so health, and disease and CCSVI relation to it. We want to have the truth coming out and we'll keep absolutely objective uh, research assessment and research rules to have a real answer. Based on this are actually our studies. I already mentioned before our initial studies based on which we provided information in which we had 500 subject MS and healthy controls. This is further going on. As I told you, we have 821 subjects enrolled, going for uh, 1,000, in which we actually looking for a very multimodal model assessment. First, and this is the only place in the world that are doing this very extensive study to learn everything that we can do from this patient. And actually volunteers also healthy controls and also other diseases. The study uh, includes the ultrasound Doppler, so non-invasive MRI of the head and of the veins, and blood workup in which we're looking for different viruses, genetics, and any other possible interfering causes uh, that may again, work together and uh, interfere with developing of MS or even CCSVI. Again, we said also the genetic part, we're looking for the genetic to risk for developing MS, but also certain genetic factors we're looking for, for example, for different interference with vitamin D absorption or other, or with more sensitive for, for smoking. So all these elements we're trying to analyze on all uh, our patients. And as I told you, we are looking for 1,000 of volunteers, looking on the left side, patients with early onset of MS, pediatric MS before 18, looking for patients with first clinical isolated syndromes, as well as patients, as we said, only with MRI-related disease, or call them as a radiological isolated syndrome. Same time, we try to increase the number of patients with MS, from all the stages, as well as healthy adults that may or may not have um, a relative with multiple sclerosis. It is also very important to learn and put on this big group of healthy controls. We have other autoimmune diseases, again, that we show that may have be associated with additional CCSVI as well as other diseases as Alzheimer, Parkinson, epilepsy, they do not have anything as much as we know today with multiple sclerosis, but may be related to CCSVI. So I would like to finish just by immediate research questions we want to answer. What's the best screening non-invasive tool for CCSVI diagnosis in MS? 
Should the patients who are negative on screening pursue any further invasive diagnostic testing? What's the role of endovascular treatment, as you heard from Professor Siddiqui, small but extremely well done and important study? Uh, we need to understand if we find more co a correlation with iron and other techniques that I showed you, why is that happening? And we want to start first longitudinal studies in which we will see how the people who have no CCSVI, can they get CCSVI, et cetera, et cetera. I think that CTEVD and premise may answer really most of these questions. Our deepest gratitude goes to all those patients who participated uh, uh, in our studies and who are following our work, to the donors, to the staff, to the university partners, to collaborators, peers, as well as to many bloggers, tweeters, readers, listeners, and countless others who continue to make our work possible, very challenging, but most of all, rewarding. Thank you very much.